I get asked, why is it all the new guns you buy, all the military guns, they come with the old military flash hider, when we know the first thing we're gonna do when we get ready for three gun season is we're gonna put a big sexy muzzle brake on it to get rid of all that recoil. Uh, why, why does the military do it? I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, the standard military flash hider, okay, the way it's indexed on the gun, it has openings just across the top of it, not down bottom. The reason why they do that is all that, uh, that fireball, once that bullet leaves the end of the barrel, fireball coming out the end, what it does is that fireball, instead of pushing straight out where it can be easily seen from the sides, it vents out through each one of these ports. Vents out to the sides, it vents up. It does not vent down because most of your infantrymen back in the day would be shooting from the prone position and that would keep it from blowing up dust off the ground. Uh, blocking him from seeing the target makes sense. Also, by having the openings on the top, it also kind of keeps the muzzle from climbing. Again, that makes sense. Um, but why do they do it? That blast is still going somewhere. That flash is still going somewhere. But what it's doing is instead of the flash coming straight at the enemy, where it can be easily seen by other enemy on the sides, the flash is opening up in a star around the front of the shooter's weapon and it does not blast out the front. It's very hard to see from the side because it's limited by these very small ports. However, from the front, the actual enemy that's being shot at, he does see a much larger visual signature, which is kind of acceptable because Hopefully he's on the receiving end of that bullet that you just sent downrange anyways, All right? Um, so that's the, the concept behind the flash hider. The fireball is still going somewhere, but it's being blocked from the other people viewing it. And instead it's made more visible to the person directly to the front. All right? so that's the concept behind it. Now your civilian flash hiders, uh, Remington and AAC, you usually see their guns with one. This, here's one of them right here. You'll see it's not closed and it's opened up. It has three openings. Vents out that, all that fireball, that flash, opens up into a thirds. This is not indexed, so it doesn't have to be keyed a certain way. This particular one is threaded so it can take an AAC suppressor. But what it does is it opens that blast up to the sides shortens the blast down this way. Again, good for getting rid of the blast if you're in a combat situation, which is why they do it. Um, I don't particularly like this design because it's open on the end. When they first started coming out with the, M the uh, M16 series of rifles in Vietnam, the flash hider was also open on the end. And what they found was in the jungle, they'd get a lot of branches and vines in there and would often hang up on the foliage around them. So they closed it. And after a few other slight modifications, they went to the modern day flash hider that comes on all of our um, military assault rifles right now. All right, so Carl, why not switch to a muzzle brake? Aren't muzzle brakes better? What is a muzzle brake? What a muzzle brake is, all right, uh, this particular one right here made by uh, JP Enterprise, this particular one has got two baffles. And what it does is now when that bullet exits the end, flies down range, right? Our mission's to mix metal and meet together. Um, that fireball still comes forward. All that pressure that's built up, that explosion that's happening, that's forcing that bullet out the end of the barrel, that explosion, all that pressure is still there it catches the front walls of these baffles and forces the front of the gun forward, hopefully with on a well-tuned muzzle brake with the same amount of force that's being recoiled backwards. A well-tuned muzzle brake, in other words, set up with the right size baffles for the right type of ammunition that you're firing through your rifle will completely alleviate any kind of recoil impulse that's coming back into your shoulder. So what?
Why is that important? That's important for that competitive shooter that needs to make that second shot on target right away, immediately, so he can move to that next target. A lot of your targets, two rounds, anywhere on target. So the quicker you can do that controlled pair or that double tap, the quicker you can move to that next target. So the better the muzzle break, the better. Um, so there are lots of designs out there. This particular one that I like to use uh, from JP Enterprise, besides the two large baffles, it also, it also has small holes on top that take out that rise of the front of the gun, that muzzle rise. And <clears throat> Another brand that's used a lot, especially by the guys in the military, this particular one's a Surefire muzzle brake. Again, two baffles. Um, very, very well designed, and this particular one is set up there so that you can thread the Surefire suppressors onto the front of the guns. Now, there are lots of other muzzle brake designs out here. Uh, here's a rather pretty one. If you look at it, this one has three baffles. Uh, this one's designed by uh, a guy out of Texas called Benny Hill. Fine gentleman, great design. Um, we personally opened up the holes on the top to tune this particular one for this length barrel for the ammo that we're, we were using that particular match. Great design and seems like every show you go to, uh, every new gun magazine you open up, there's a new design of a new muzzle brake that is better, greater, sexier and is going to make you more accurate. The problem with a lot of these muzzle brakes and the reason why the military doesn't like everyone using them is a lot of times when you're coming into that shoot house or that structure where the bad guys are in, you're in a low light situation. You may even be under night vision goggles. And instead of that flash going forward or being dissipated by that flash hider on a standard military rifle, that flash is now boomed back in just two directions. It's a big fireball. Uh, you've seen them on the ranges. The guys running the muzzle brakes have guns that are much louder to the people that are left and right than the guys that are just shooting a flat crowned barrel or somebody with a flash hider. It's not generating any more decibels. It's not generating any more explosive force. It's just now it's forcing that shockwave back. So to the left and right, to the rear, guys running muzzle brakes are going to be a lot louder. Likewise, under night vision goggles, it's a much, uh, much more distracting fireball. So that's why militaries, some are on board, some are not. Now, there are some designed muzzle brakes that have a shroud around it that actually catches the blast, vents it, and then directs it all directly forward. And the intent of that was so that when you go into the shootout, it works as a fully functional muzzle brake, but it, you don't get the distracting fireball from that. It's okay, I don't have a lot of experience running with them. I know some assaulters that tried them, but I also know those same assaulters still aren't running them. All right, so what you need to find is a happy medium, somewhere where you still get all the benefit, benefits of a flash hider and you get all the added recoil management benefits of a good muzzle brake. Now there are some out there that uh, different designs this particular one, you can see the top of it is opened up like a flash hider. But then when you turn it, you can also see that it has still got two baffles, basically, for it to work as a muzzle brake. Now, if you lay it down as the, the weapon is fired, those two baffles are actually open further on the top. And this helps manage some of the uh, rise of the barrel when you're shooting fast. OK design, does it? manage recoil as well as the JP brake or the Benny Cooley brake? No, it doesn't. Does it block the flash as well as the military flash hider? No, it does not. However, it um, meets somewhere in the middle. Now, my personal favorite is uh, this particular one right here. It's made by AAC. This is a 7.62 version. But uh, if you can see where the camera's at, it still has a flash hider open on the top, okay? I'm not big that it's not completely closed. You're gonna get sticks and vines in it. I'm really a little too old to be running through the jungle. I don't think I have to worry about that. But it, and it only has a single baffle for catching that blast wave. It's opened on the top also, 
to help manage uh, recoil climb. And what I've found is even shooting 308, this is on a 308 gas gun, it still manages the recoil very, very well. And I have the option that I can thread my, uh, my AAC 308 suppressor on there. And that right there, to me, not so much worried about cutting the sound out, but a good suppressor completely alleviates that flash altogether. So my preferred choice and what I recommend for people is understand the difference between a flash hider and a muzzle brake. Understand why, whatever your mission may be, you may lean in one direction or the other. If all you're gonna do is shoot three gun, by all means, go with the most effective muzzle brake that you can find. If you're leaning more towards a tactical scenario where you're really worried about the other bad guys shooting back at you, you may wanna look towards a flash hider. General purpose though, I honestly believe there's enough really great products out there that meet in the, media, in the middle and you get that good happy medium and um, that's what you need to do. Analyze what your particular mission is and find the, find the break that works best for you. Thank <laughs> you.